Hey everyone, this is Corey with Mile Split, and I have a special interview uh, with you today. It's Dylan Morlock of Norway High School in Ohio, just south of Cleveland. He's currently the U.S. number one shot put thrower in the country, and he is the reigning New Balance Nationals outdoor champion in the event. Dylan, um, congrats on your accomplishments so far. How are you? Good. How are you? Um, it's thank, thanks again for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you, your resume is growing, so it means I have to say all these nice things about you. The more you win, so <laughs> <laughs> um, good, good problem to have. Yeah, for sure. And I feel like it's there's you know a cold stretch happening across the U.S. It isn't just Ohio. I think it's pretty much everywhere we're experiencing cold. Um, right now, <laughs> I, I see a little snow in your background. What's it like in Ohio? weather wise um right now it's like we this is probably as bad as it's been for i don't know we usually have like a, a stretch in ohio where it, where it gets kind of cold and we get a lot of snow and everything freezes up nights which i really don't mind but honestly it's it's kind of mild at times but springs are kind of rough with the rain we get some rains that are pretty pretty brutal especially with how cold it is whenever it does rain so how does it impact your training right now uh, um right now it doesn't really impact my throwing too much i i really a lot of people like to throw outside during indoor which honestly i think i probably should do more of but i i mainly throw inside and i just indoor to me is a lot about growing my technique and trying to build a base and really build some good habits back and get back into throwing rather than, I guess, try and hit crazy marks. I'm it's, it's more like a looking at yourself and what, what can I do to better myself to set myself up for later in the year? You stepped into the indoor season at a really good time in your career. As I mentioned previously, you, you won new balance outdoor when you probably weren't anticipated to win that. So yeah. what did that do for your confidence and momentum as you kind of made your way toward your last indoor season? Um, I, I would say that it, it definitely put my confidence up. I mean, it's, that's, that's always a double-edged sword whenever you do something like that. Cause then you're like, well, I have to, I have to stay at that level and I have to compete, compete at that level. But it's a lot of mental training. You have to tell yourself that like, you have to keep working, but also that you shouldn't put too much pressure on yourself that you have to throw this or have to throw that. It should be just like the way I like to think about it is I just like to go out there and have fun and compete as hard as I can every competition. Cause if I'm doing that, then I'm doing all that I can do and I can't be too disappointed in myself. I had to feel good to win though. I right. I had to feel yeah, good. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, Cause it was on, it was on your first throw too that you hit that big mark right yeah yeah okay and everyone was, was go ahead yeah that was that was that was a competition i mean i came i so i remember my first warm-up throw i my first full warm-up throw which i usually only do one full out of uh in warm-ups i threw it and it like completely fell out of my hand it went probably like 40 feet and i was just like you know what? The only thing that was wrong with that throw was my hand. I don't need another warm up. And like I, it kind of freaked some people out with that, but I guess it worked to my advantage because I came in and threw that big one off the start. So you said that things change a little bit after you win a, a big meet like that. It also can help you move the goalposts a little bit. It make you be maybe a little bit more ambitious. Obviously you know, winning is about performing against the guy next to you, not necessarily, you know, throwing the farthest you've ever thrown or throwing a national record. It's about, you know, kind of performing against your competitors. But all that being said, did it allow you to think bigger and goal set a little larger? I I definitely think it it definitely did. Because I've I've always had like, I don't know, like as you move up, throughout like your throwing career like it seems like there's always there's always something bigger and once you get to like that next step whether it be like going from 
like winning states to competing in a national meet like that's a new that's a new level and like it almost like puts you back at the start you're like all nervous again because you get you get used to the nerves if like you're competing in these meets all the time but once you get to a new meet it's really cool because you get to feel the nerves and you get to like oh i don't know it's 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 an amazing feeling for me because it feels like i don't know you start at the bottom again this is kind of what it feels like. Nobody expects anything from you, but yeah. then once you do excel at that level, then they are expecting it from you. So you kind of have to back yourself up. Yeah. I like that analogy. You know, you're kind of stepping up a level and then you're at the bottom of that next level mm -hmm. working your way up again. Uh, I like that a lot. I read something in, I think it was your local paper uh, after the state championships that about your grandfather did did you get dedicate your season to your grandfather last year um i i wouldn't really say that like i came out and said that like like this season is for my grandfather but i definitely there's definitely a lot of time spent thinking thinking about it and i definitely would say that a lot of the tenacity and just effort that i put into my training and everything was had to do a lot with him and I think I think it just gave me a better perspective on life and that like I have all these things that like I can do there's no reason that I shouldn't be giving my best effort for every throw every lift every just everything that I can do and I think it really changed me as a person and helped me out like taking care of the moment, being present in that moment, kind of yeah. in, in that respect. Do you still wear the hat? I do. I do have it. I, I wear it sometimes. I try not to wear it too often because yeah. I just don't want to break it or lose it or anything. <laughs> no, that, hey, that's perfectly fine. That That is a memento you want to save for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, so I do want to talk about your your most recent competition. It was at Kent State. You you threw a 66 uh, foot four and a half inch uh, shot put, yeah. which was the U.S. one. Um, how how excited were you with that early performance? Um, yeah, I I was honestly pretty pretty starstruck about that throw because of just because of I don't just how far it was in indoor. Like I've I've never touched anything like that in indoor before, and I knew that I definitely had the potential. I just didn't didn't know when or how it was going to come, but it, so the way that competition started was like, I started off and I threw, like I threw one of my first throws and it was like a 62 or something. And I was like, that didn't feel that good. And it was a 62. I was like, okay. It's like this, this could be a good comp here. And I don't know. It was, it was just one of those days where you feel like you walk in that circle and you can do no wrong like every throw is a good throw and it was just a, just a really good competition. I was able to build and build like I, I usually don't. And it was just, it was just a good competition. So progressively you got sort of a little bit better. You found your rhythm a little bit more. What, what throw did that, that mark come on? It came on my fifth, fifth row. Yeah. Cause yeah, it was my fifth row. So I built, slowly build up into it. I think I had like two 64 foot throws in that competition as well, which is something that makes me really proud that not only can I throw, throw a far throw, but I can throw it decently consistent whenever I'm clicking. I think one underrated thing for any athlete, you know, is, you know, before you step into your arena, whatever it is, you know, you're ready, you're prepared and their preparation gets you to that place, but making adjustments on the fly is a whole different animal. Not everyone does it well. Um, and in your particular discipline, it requires a lot of, you know, intricate details. You know, if mm -hmm. you throw something out of the, the sector, you got to figure out why you got to figure out yeah. how it comes off your, your, your hand. I mean, what are the adjustments that you've learned to make, you know, when you are, are competing in the circle and you gotta, you gotta change some things up. I think that one thing there's there, a lot of people do this and I myself do this at times is some people come into like a new facility or something and like they're not familiar with the circle and like it's just something about it is like throws them off. It's different than what they're used to. 
And for some people that can really affect them, but that's, that's something that I've got really good at just like looking past it and realizing that it's the same circle. There's a tow board. It's everything's the same. And look, at times like your throws aren't like, just like you asked, like sometimes your throws aren't where they should be and you have to make adjustments. And that's something that honestly is really, really challenging. I don't know many people that can just make an adjustment like that and fix it throughout their series. And, but that's one thing that I've tried to just like focus on one thing that you want to change in your throw and try and execute it as best as you can. Where does competition of your peers fall into that too? Um, do you get better when there's more pressure on you? Do you, you know, when the spotlight is off of you, maybe it's just, you know, another meet. Do you, do you feel a little bit more flexible? Um, what kind of atmosphere do you enjoy the most? Um, I would say that like my favorite atmosphere to throw in is like whenever it's not, it's not only like a competition and like everyone's good, but like whenever you can go into a competition and know that you're thrown, thrown against a bunch of guys that you just enjoy being around. Like yeah. to me, that, that is the most fun part about throwing is that you can, you can go in there and talk to a bunch of guys that are very similar to you and just have a good time throwing as far as you can. That's one thing I, I have noticed a lot, uh, spending time around, um, you know, field event, field eventers, it, there is a little bit more camaraderie. It feels like you guys got uh, a, a boys group, uh, boys crew yeah. sometimes. Right. Um, so have you, a few sort of built relationships, uh, along the way throwing, have, has it been a really good step for you kind of, you know, building relationships and rapports, you know, in Ohio and out, outside of it? Definitely. I would definitely say that it has been probably the, the thing that has built some of the, like probably the most relationships in my life, just throughout throwing and throwing against different guys from the area. And I've met some people I probably would have never met that I really enjoy being around. Um, like some, some of my best friends are throwers and I wouldn't have met them without throwing. So I, I definitely think that it's something that it's not, it's it's competitive but it's friendly competition if you're if you're treating it the right way i would say yeah for sure so on your biggest throws and maybe even that one recently can you describe what it feels like when it comes off your hand um do you act do you do you realize it in the moment or is it kind of an uh, a reflection after you've seen the mark it's it's so whenever you hit a like a big throw, I would say there's, there's some, they're not all built the same. Cause one, one mistake that I made was I hit, I hit a big mark my sophomore year and I tried to, I kept trying to recreate that. I was like, if I could just recreate this out of this throw. And sometimes that's not the past. Sometimes you have to no, I shouldn't be trying to recreate that. I should just work on, this because this is a better position or whatever but whenever you do connect on a big throw like that it's just something that you're just like wow how far did that go and like it and especially the last one like I felt like I was I was having good marks good marks good marks and I hit that one and I was like oh boy how far is that like it's you just know, you know that it's big whenever it leaves your hand and it's such a, it's just such a great feeling. It stays with you. I'm assuming too. Kind of. Yes. I, I've been fortunate to talk to a lot of great throwers over my years working with mile split. And I've even gotten a chance to talk to the best ever, which is Michael Carter um, from, from Dallas. And I, one thing he told me last year, uh, you know, when he was trying to describe his, his high school training was that like, he was a beast. Like he, he would have some days where he would work out for like three hours straight, but he said to get out to the seventies and in 82, where I think he ultimately threw, he would, mm -hmm. he would throw with the 16 pound a lot. And then once he came back to the 12 pound, he do, you know, a lot more reps and it just would feel it, like the transition between the two would help him. 
Have you ever, yeah. when it comes to training, have you ever done that? Do you toggle between, you know, different weights to, you know, kind of build your strength? And how, how is your training? I would, I would definitely say that I fluctuate weights. I do a lot more of it outdoor because I have a lot more access to like different, different weights. Um, like I, I do throw the 16 from time to time. I really enjoy the 14 pound. That's, that's one of my favorite, favorite things to throw, but I would definitely say that it helps you out and it exposes some of the areas that you're weak. Cause if you, if you throw the same, the same weight all the time, then you're, form and everything gets accustomed to the weight rather than maybe being what it's supposed to be. So I would definitely say that it points out flaws. And as far as like, sometimes a 16 pound will point out a flaw and the maybe going to a light ball will point out a different flaw. So it's something I, I definitely like to go both ways with it. So I really do enjoy throwing the different weights and I think they're helpful. That's fair. Now you, you do everything pretty pretty well um you also throw the weight indoors outdoors you throw the discus um mm -hmm. and the hammer now do you consider yourself more of a discus thrower by nature or are you just a jack of all trades like if you had your pick of the litter what would it be um i would i would definitely say that if i had to pick one right now it would probably be shot but but i don't I think that that is partially due to how much time I spend with the shot put throughout the transition from indoor to outdoor. There's just that much more hours in it. So I don't think it's any mistake that I'm better at shot put, but I, I enjoy all the events for what they are. Cause some like they're all different feelings, but they're all kind of the same feeling. It's like, like whenever you hit the, hit a cue right or hit that good form. It's just like, Oh my gosh. Like you feel, you just feel so much better that you were able to overcome that. And, but I would say that honestly, um, I've, I like, I started out really liking discus. So if that, if that tells you anything, <laughs> I, you're mixed, you're probably that's mixed. What got me into it. Okay, that's fair. Hey, you won state titles in both last year, right? Yeah. But and and discus. Okay. And I know I've read uh, of a recent like technique change that Ryan Krauser has made that he says like helps has helped elevate uh his performance, you know, getting getting the um I believe it's the the, the shot put out there and it's a spin. There's something he does with a spin. Can you yeah. talk a little bit about your your technique? I mean, how has, has your technique improved over time and gotten you to the place where you are right now? And what what do you still work on to get better? Um, some of the some of the things that I really like. Well, I guess I'll start with um, how my technique has changed, and I would say that it like a lot. It, it's weird because you look at like some videos and it doesn't look like it's changed that much, but sometimes it feels completely different. And one thing I've started doing out of the back is like, I'll start instead of, I, I threw like completely static starts all the way up until like my junior year, I started to, to do non-statics, but it, that was something that I think really helped me improve as a thrower, just with, being more balanced and being able to utilize my power that I have through my balance and rather than just trying to muscle it out there because, because I'm not, I mean, I'm not a crazy big guy. I'm not 250 pounds. Like I've been two two 225 for most of, most of my throwing career, but that's one thing that I've changed and, I have a lot of different cues that I like to use, but I would say that the one thing that I've focused on throughout throwing is just trying to stay balanced and being able to utilize my power through my balance. So, so adding movement to, to the start of your throw though, creates ultimately a little bit more power for you on, on the, on the release at the end. Yeah. Of the throw? Yeah. I would definitely say um, just because I felt like whenever I was using my static, I was, I was like, well, there's, there's other things that I can get better at in the throw that'll make it go farther. 
So I'm not going to worry about out of the back. I'm I'm going to stay controlled and stay. And I just got to the point where I was like, there's only so many things that I can think of that I can do now. Like I have to, I have to start, I guess, going to the next level, like I was talking about earlier. And so I definitely say that I started at the bottom, started slow with a, with a little bit of movement, but as I've trained and practiced more, it's gotten, it's gotten a lot more, I guess it's gotten a lot less static. So I've yeah. started with a little, little bit more of a throw out of the back, but it definitely helped has helped me get some momentum and utilize, utilize my speed that I really haven't been utilizing too much. So you have a long ways to go. It, you know, it's, it's the long game and track you have basically end of your season is, is June and it's only January. So there's time to really make huge improvements. I don't know if you look at numbers or if you, if you aspire for, for numbers, but you know, the, where you are right now, 66, you're not that far away from 70. I mean, at times it probably feels a far away and other times yeah. it probably doesn't feel far at all. So um, how do you look at that number? It's become a barrier in high school. Yeah, it's it's always something that I've been like, I feel like I can throw that far one day. And something like I, I honestly was kind of looking at it and like knowing that that was my end goal that I wanted to throw at least 70 feet before, before my year, before my high school throwing is over. And I think now that I've hit that, that 66 foot throw, I'm like, maybe this is a little bit closer than I imagined it being like, that's four feet. I mean, four feet can be a lot, but it, it also puts it, puts it that much closer and makes me want it that much more. And so I def and even hitting it within indoor that puts it closer to me. Cause I'm like, all right, I got the rest of indoor and the outdoors that I can improve. So, but I definitely know that the way to 70 feet isn't through worrying too much about the competitions. It's about worrying about the training and doing all the little things, right. For sure. All right. Before we go, just want to ask a few small things. I mean, you signed with Michigan State over the National Letter of Intent period. So that's mm -hmm. in Lansing, Michigan. Um, what led you to Michigan State? Um, so my older brother, actually, he throws up there, which he is. He's been a really big part of everything that I've done within my life, especially throwing. He's He's really kind of led the way for me, and I really can't thank him enough for that. But um, I, I took some visits to some other schools, and, like, I checked them out. And I don't know. I just – I got on to campus at Michigan State, and it, it felt like home. It felt like the place that I needed to be. And it just it just had the – it, it felt like me and, like, the campus and everyone were just, like, had the same vibe, I guess. I don't know if that's – Hey, that's uh, hey, vi vibes where it's at. That's what you yeah. need, right? You got to feel that vibe to be. Yeah, to feel I, was, I, was, I was definitely feeling the vibe whenever I got up there. So, OK, that's fair. All good throwers have well, all good. I would say all good wrestlers have nicknames. Some throwers have great nicknames, too. Big guys tend to have nicknames, right? Do you do yeah. you have a nickname yourself? Um. I'm trying to think of some. Uh, my my football coach is always they always called me Dilly. Well, I know one that always called me Dilly. Um, but other I really don't have that many nicknames. People just kind of look at me and say, "Hey, I guess." <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I I would say that a lot of people call me Morlock, but I have a lot of cousins and <laughs> other other family members that have the same last name. So it's hard to hard for people to do that. So I would, the only one that was really stuck with me has been Dilly. Okay. Or D. Okay. It's a good one. It's a good one. Have you ever seen Rocky four? Yes. Okay. Is your training closer to Rocky or is it closer to Drago? Um, I would I would say it's closer to Drago, like my my actual training. Um, I 
some some of the stuff that Rock, Rocky was doing in that montage, man. I was <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I got the core strength for some of that, but um I would say that it's definitely closer to Drago. Okay. Sorry. Right. Hey, Drago's son became uh, a good guy in Creed three, I think, or Creed two. So I, was gonna say, I, th- I think I heard about that. So yeah, it all, it all comes full circle. So um, <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, well, Dylan, thank you so much for taking the time to to speak to me. Obviously I've had a great uh, beginning of your indoor season and you got, you know, a lot left to go Ohio state championships, um, national championships in March, uh, wherever you decide to go likely new balance. Uh, so best of luck there. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Yeah. For everyone watching, this has been another for the record interview on miles, Split. stay tuned for more over the weeks. Thanks.